In 1945, World War II in Europe was brought a major step closer to its final end after the suicide and death of German Führer Adolf Hitler. By this point, nearly all countries on earth that were not part of the Axis had declared war on Germany, and as such, most countries celebrated the news of Hitler's death. But one country that had a slightly different reaction was Ireland. Parts of the Irish government took the extraordinary step and gave the German government their condolences after hearing of Hitler's death. Which raises the question, why would the government of Ireland do this? During the war, Ireland had maintained a policy of strict neutrality, not wanting to get involved in the war by joining either side, as this would have meant the threat of widespread death and destruction. But many people in Ireland did favour the Allies, and so there were exceptions to this neutrality. For instance, while German pilots who landed in Ireland were interned for the duration of the war, British pilots were secretly delivered back to Britain. The Irish government would also share Atlantic Ocean weather reports with the British, which during the planning of weather-sensitive operations, such as the D-Day invasion of Normandy, were crucial. On the other hand, this leaning towards Britain did have its limits. The Irish refused to let the Allies use Irish ports during the Battle of the Atlantic, something which greatly upset the British and later the Americans after 1941. The Irish also rejected a proposed plan by Winston Churchill which called for a united Ireland in exchange for Ireland joining the war on the Allied side, as the forced incorporation of Northern Ireland into the Republic would have likely caused massive unrest or even a civil war in Ireland. Plus, a promise from Churchill was not exactly a guarantee or a formal treaty. So given that Ireland and the Irish people clearly favoured the Allies, why did the Irish government send condolences after Hitler's death? Well, for starters, it was not the whole Irish government that gave its condolences, but only the Taoiseach, or Prime Minister of Ireland, Eamon de Valera. And contrary to widespread belief, this did not take the form of any written letter or statement to the German government. Instead, the condolences were given verbally by de Valera when he visited the German ambassador in Dublin, Edward Hempel. This greatly upset the British, and especially the Americans, since after the death of American President Franklin Roosevelt, just three weeks earlier, no such similar action had been taken. In fact, a planned memorial service for President Roosevelt was eventually cancelled because the Americans planned to hold the service in a Protestant church, but many Irish government officials refused to attend unless it was held in a Catholic church. Although the Irish government did order flags in Dublin to be lowered to half-mast as a tribute to honour President Roosevelt. So why did De Valera give these condolences to the German ambassador if it was obvious it would only anger the Allies and even other people in Ireland? Well, since Ireland was neutral, it was proper protocol to offer a country condolences after the death of its head of state and de Valera was committed to following all the protocols of neutrality even to the very end of the war. This was because the Allies, especially the United States, had put pressure on Ireland to take more actions that would have benefited the Allies, such as giving the Allies use of Irish ports to help in the Battle of the Atlantic. De Valera was also angered at the Americans for stationing troops in Northern Ireland, which he considered to be part of the Republic and thus regarded the American presence as unlawful and was angered at not being consulted. Irish-American relations broke down even further when in 1945, as the war was coming to an end, the Americans demanded that the German embassy in Dublin be closed before the German ambassador could destroy any sensitive documents. This is the result of the decision taken by the President and Mr. Churchill to isolate error as far as possible and thus prevent vital war information leaking into Southern Ireland for in Dublin, there are still German and Japanese diplomatic representatives. De Valera refused to close the embassy as he saw this as the US disregarding Irish neutrality and putting unlawful pressure on the Irish government. And so, De Valera's visit to the German embassy after Hitler's death was probably his way of trying to observe all the protocols set by neutrality, as a way to reassert Irish sovereignty and diplomatic independence. Unfortunately, this isolated Ireland as it went completely against the feelings of most countries in the world. In fact, only Spain and Portugal would perform similar actions, and even flew their flags at half-mast to mark Hitler's death. 
Whatever De Valera's reasoning, his actions greatly damaged Ireland's reputation around the world. Ireland's neutrality in the eyes of the world quickly went from a necessity of war to unjustified moral superiority. This would have a lasting effect on Ireland even after the war, as they were not allowed to join the United Nations until 1955 because of their neutrality during the war. But it's important to remember that while the condolences given to Germany are a strange and regrettable part of Ireland's World War II history, they were only the actions of one man, and not the Irish government or the Irish people as a whole, and were the result of specific diplomatic circumstances. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more from Newsreel History and help more content get made, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.